It's The List and your boy with Jimmy Van and Sean Ross. We are live. Oh, hello there, friends. My name is Sean Ross Sapp. You will probably remember me from the popular crossover wrestling and MMA website, Fightful.com. I have a startling confession to make. I, like many of you, formerly cooked with butter, margarine, canola oil, quite frankly, fucking trash. Fortunately, now I use OMG from omg.com that's a big ass jar holy cow it's big you can get your vitamins a d e and k your omega threes your omega nines just by visiting omg.com that's omg h-e-e dot com let them know you heard about their fine product at omg butter on twitter jimmy we're on Periscope and Twitter and YouTube. And nothing broke, nothing smoking. It's all good. You all can watch us on Twitter now, at least for now, until the shit breaks. I have been uh, texting Sean on Tuesday nights for like the last two or three weeks, shitting on the internet in uh, Ewing, Kentucky, because yeah. he goes on for like 30 seconds and then the stream ends. And I was like, what's going on? So that's why. Were you doing this last it's night too? Not a, it's, no, no. It's not an internet issue. It's something with my PC that I'm going to get fixed. By that's your week. brand new computer. Last year, yes. And yes, it should still be operating fine. When I restart, it does. So How much porn are think, you watching on that computer? Quite a, quite a bit, man. <laughs> I am anchored to this desk, so quite a bit. Because otherwise, but, why would it be gone after a year already? I got a lot of programs on here, but I'm I'm looking I'm figuring it out. I've, every time I restart the computer, it works just fine. So well, okay, figure it out. He's hey, got listen, a lot of programs, listen. Nigel. Oh yeah, lots. Uh, whatever, whatever. It, it, what is it to you that ninety percent of my hard drive consists of porn and software to to uh, wiretast and audacity and all that? What's it to you? So long as the people in the porn are uh, eighteen or over, you do what you want, man. You do what you want. You want to spread OMG all over those porn people? Hey, that's your business. <laughs> Just 18 and over. That's all I care about. We're good. We're good there. So it's first in- com. We got FightfulSelect.com. Cheap plug. Uh, Eric Young, Nova, Derek Wild, a, a match from your archives, Jimmy, that we did commentary over. I'll be on vacation this week, but that goes up this Friday. So definitely worth checking out. Worth the sub. Yeah, and that yeah. was from 17 years ago. Eric Young in a match with Nova and uh, Danger Boy Derek Walt 17 years ago. So it's interesting to check out. Hi, Nigel. Hey. How you doing? He's back. I'm good. I'm good. So uh, Nigel was on vacation a couple weeks ago. How did that go? Like, did anything happen while you were away? Like, how was your vacation? How was everything? Uh, pretty pretty good for the most part. Other pretty than, good for other the, most than part? the Wednesday. Other than Wednesday. What happened that day? Uh, well, I was... Uh, trying to watch to see how the show went at the same time that uh, my girlfriend had sliced over her, open her finger and we were going to the emergency room. Right. And how? also preparing for possibly a power outage. Yeah. What did she do? Um, she picked up a knife off of the counter, I guess, to put it away and dropped it and it went across her thumb. Oof. Is it because she like instinctually tried to grab it when she dropped it? I don't know what happened because we were just sitting down to do something. So she shouldn't have needed to get up and do that in the first place, which was kind of the irksome part of it. It was like, well, okay. Yeah. yeah so I, Sean, I, question I, for you. Hey, last plug, last plug. All right, go ahead. If you want a discount code for OMG, check out the <laughs> Holy Smokes podcast this week. It's on there. You had a question for me. Yeah, and it's kind of related. So you, you said during your plug that you used to cook with margarine. Like, would you actually fry with margarine? I mean, I would use margarine with, with shit. Because can you fry with margarine? Like, does you margarine... do all kinds of shit. You could, you could piss in a pan and fry with that. Yeah, but that's does... practically what you're doing if you don't use OMG. Next fucking question. Does margarine melt the way butter does? Because I don't, I don't cook with margarine. I'm not an expert. I am now. I got OMG. Stop talking about old shit. That's a big jar. Like, how it long is, can that it, last? It's a two-pounder. That's crazy. That's crazy. That's a big it's, jar. It's, 
a crazy good deal when you use the discount code that we give you on every Fightful MMA podcast. Are you going to bring that when you go on vacation, which was not approved uh, tomorrow? <laughs> no, because I fear TSA would take that, I would imagine. You're staying in the country, no? Yeah, I'm flying, though. Oh, they don't care. I'm, I'm, they care. Carry it on. They care. They care. I've taken lots of shit over the border, and it's never really been a problem, let alone if you're staying the country. I don't care about the shit you've taken over the border, anyway. <laughs> no, I don't use public bathrooms for that. This is allegedly a wrestling show. Oh, it is. We're going to get to wrestling. i got a couple more questions for you. So, uh, where are you going on vacation? Is it South Carolina? Oak Island, North Carolina. I'm flying into Myrtle Beach, and my buddies are picking me up from there. We're going to Oak Island. And why'd you choose that? What, Oak Island? Yeah. I didn't. They did. I wanted to go to Denver. Why'd you want to go to Denver? There are many reasons I wanted to go to Denver. Did you want to, like, sing on a mountaintop? Like, why did you want to go yeah, to Denver? Yeah, that's, exa- that's what I want to do. I have a lot of friends out there, uh, a lot of MMA friends who train at altitude there. There's, uh, I have a lot of friends that have relocated out there. Is Russo out there still? He's been going around, uh, right? I feel like he moved back, mm. and I don't know. I, I haven't spoken to him in a few months. What do you think of the DAZN app? I think that it doesn't deserve to be called that because that's not how it's spelled. It's doesn't. That that is, as I said on the Holy Smoke show, you can't do that. You gotta buy a vowel. They cost money. You, you called it dazen. You called it something. D a z n and expect people to call it dazone. You need more vowels than that, Playboy. <laughs> you called it dazen on uh, Tuesday. Whatever it's, whatever it is, it's, it's a bad idea. For, for Bellator to go there. Although I understand they're like a top 6,000 Alexa ranked website. So apparently they get some sort of traffic. How many views do you think that Bellator show would get? Like 10,000 or something? Mm-hmm. 20, 30,000 considering the components. You got McDonald and Musashi. You got uh, Vanderlei and Rampage. And you got what a, a waste of an opportunity. That's a waste of an opportunity. Real wa- it's a waste of a pay-per-view in my estimation. Yeah, it is. It I is. think that pay-per-view does about 75000 Yeah. Probably. So you know something, Sean? We're doing this on June 27. And I last checked about an hour ago. It's 3 p.m. Eastern right now. I last checked about an hour ago. And WWE stock was at $72.05 for a market cap of $5.56 billion, which is insane. And it's all because... Yesterday, James Ellsworth got rehired. That's exactly why. And people are stoked about Ellsworth Oscar next week on SmackDown. That's the reason. But yeah. aside from that, aside from that, yesterday, June 26th, they officially announced their new US TV deals. Uh, five years for Raw on USA Network. Five years for SmackDown on Fox. Moving to Friday nights officially uh, starting October 4, 2019 on Fox. They actually sent in a press release that uh, SmackDown is a flagship show which I thought was yes. interesting. And they also confirmed it's going to stay two hours, and they confirmed it's going to be live, even though we already knew that. So uh, what would you think of that whole thing? Uh, nothing really new came out of that. It's pretty much all, you know. Well, well, when I hear stuff like that, I selfishly think of how it will affect me and the site, and I'm like, okay, so instead of that slam-packed, usually Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, it's going mm. to be more of a Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday slam-packed thing. And it's like that that's unusual. Like, would that affect... This show, would it affect other shows? How, how will that handle things? Friday night is an abyss for wrestling TV, but if Fox wants to do it and they're paying the money, then you do it. And a lot of people said, oh, but will it be live? How, how will they do it? What about the Hall of Fame? Who gives a shit about the Hall of Fame? <laughs> with the that's money they're getting? With, that's up there with mixed match madness for. Who gives a shit? They should. They need to do that in a different setting and venue anyway. Make that Thursday. Uh, I'm more curious as to what this does for companies like, uh, for WrestleMania weekend, companies like Ring of Honor, who would traditionally run Friday, because now you're going to have a show that if you're WWE, you really want to load down that, or load up that go-home SmackDown when yeah. events are going to piggyback off of you. There are a lot of falling pieces here, but Friday nights, there we go. So they did a media call this morning, uh, June 27, and as part of that, they provided a PDF presentation. I, ha- I grabbed one page out of that, which Nigel's going to put up for our video viewers, because I thought this was kind of interesting. So this is a closer look at what they call their key content agreements for their top seven countries or regions. 
Uh, and those countries or regions are the US, Canada, the UK, India, South Africa, Latin America, and the Middle East. And as you can see, if you're a video viewer by this chart here, WWE expects that total revenue from all rights fees deals in these seven regions is going to increase from 213 million in 2017 to 542 million in 2020 542 million in 2021 that's 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 insane now they did know that uh they have deals that they need to resign in some of those regions and thanks to uh chris harrington that uh, provided some of this information so the uk and india deals are up uh, december of next year the latin america deals up october of next year the middle east deal is up at the end of uh, 2019 but they fully expect that they're going to sign all new deals with all those areas so shouldn't be a problem it's it's pretty insane. They can keep signing James Ellsworth's new contracts yeah. with that kind of money, Sean. They can sign anybody they want at this point. Yeah. And, you know, I always heard, you, you, you know who the real, real doofuses are when you see them say, well, NXT doesn't make money. It's a money loser. It's a money loser. That's an investment so they can produce the amount of talent that they have to continue to make deals like this on the main roster. And... Oh, then, then they can go start a UK tournament. Then they can go start a women's tournament. Then they can start a tag team tournament. Anything they damn well want. They're going to have NXT South America. They're going to have it. They'll have NXT Middle East probably. I mean, they're going to do it. They just need to have enough talent in those regions. But they're And gonna, they they're are gonna going to... They have... They have unlimited funds now, essentially. They're going to they're gonna have it well into the future. This is a really good deal. I mentioned in the past i am pretty damn glad i essentially hicked, hooked my wag or hitched my wagon to wrestling and that's where the majority of my following is at because wrestling in that sense is pretty healthy mma is in a real down period right now mm -hmm. and it's funny because fox just kind of well they did what what ufc thought with a low ball deal which mm -hmm. essentially was what they offered wwe for a weekly show two hours on Friday. And UFC went and got their own pretty good deal on ESPN. They're going to get a lot more coverage. I think everything that happened works out better for all involved. I think UFC will be healthier on ESPN. I think WWE will be much healthier for SmackDown, at least being on Fox. It's a trade-off, essentially. Well, you're on Fox, but you're giving up Tuesday for Friday and switching your schedule around. I'm optimistic about this this move, and I think it's I think it's a good one. Don't you think, not that I want to talk MMA, but don't you think that the UFC deal could hinder them because a lot of their fights are going to be on a, on a paywall, essentially? Yes. They're going to be less eyeballs watching those fights? Yeah, and uh, it the thing is, that's that's the, the price they're paying, essentially. They are serving as a loss leader for ESPN+. Plus. Yes. And, hey, what's old Dazen doing with Bellator <laughs> right now? Same shit, right? We should keep so calling it that. We're, we're going to keep Dazen, calling it Dazen. Yeah, we are. Yeah, Bellator, we it seems like they looked at <laughs> the ESPN situation and yeah. said they're going to make more money for ESPN Plus cards than they do for pay-per-view right now. So maybe we can be a loss leader too. And as it turns out, they can. Yeah, I think Bellator, it's a mistake because I don't think they're getting that much from Dazzin. But uh, whatever, we'll see. So uh, let's move on. So you know how Ring of Honor has a partnership with New Japan? Have for a while, right? Yeah. What do you think of this one? So WWE, the Wrestling Observer reported that WWE has entered into a partnership with Pro Wrestling Noah. And on September 1st at a Noah show at Sumo Hall in Tokyo, Hideo Itami is going to be billed as Kenta, which was his pre-WWE name. And he's going to face now Michi Marufuji on a Noah show. Um, what do you think? I mean, Marufuji is a veteran. I remember him from Ring of Honor. He worked in O'Brien a few times. This could be interesting. I mean, obviously, they're probably going to send Asuka. Maybe they'll send Shinsuke for, a, for an event. Maybe they'll bring some of the Noah guys. They might bring some of the Noah guys over. What do you think of that? It's good. It's good for, for guys like that. I mean, right now, their champion is Segura, who's like 48, and can't imagine WDB has a ton of interest in him, but there are people that, that they will have interest in. I think it's good if you're... If you're not capitalizing off of these guys to the extent that you can, uh, make use of them. And that's what WWE is doing. They're making use. They're going to make use of this partnership when no one no longer has the N NJPW connection. So, do you it, think that WWE is doing this because they want to they want to bring exposure to their guys because it's part of their plan to take over 
the Japanese market and to create NXT Japan. Do you think that's kind of where they're yes. looking? Yes, I think this is essentially them testing the water, dipping their toes in. Uh, right now, they're not going to jump in. There might be some sharks in there in Japan. <laughs> New Japan is a shark in Japan right yes. now. Yeah. Right now, they're 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 walking on the beach and throwing a Nerf football around. They're not like diving in. I think it's a good move. They can eventually do it. Maybe eventually they buy Pro Wrestling Noah. I don't know, but I th think it would. I think definitely NXT Japan is something that's going to happen. Yeah, I think so too. Now speaking of Daniel Bryan, uh, Team Hell No reunited on SmackDown this week. They're going to get a sh they're going to get a shot at the tag titles at Extreme Rules against the Bludgeon Brothers. What do you think about the fact that Daniel Bryan, after three years away, came back, was put into a somewhat meaningless program with Big Cass, uh, and now he is going to he's reteaming with Kane. What do you think? Good, bad. If you're if you're gonna do nothing with him, you might as well do something nothing that gets a warm reaction out of the crowd. So I'm I'm okay with this. I, I thought it. I'm surprised. I got the production script late last night, and I will post it on FightfulSelect.com still because I know a lot of people just like to look at it for things that are in this. But it didn't have any mention of him. I and you know when they brought up Bludgeon Brothers to or they brought them in to feud with him essentially with mm -hmm. him being brian it's like who's who's gonna be the guy yeah that would be somebody hey, and i think that's fine team hell no is sort of a marquee act in that nostalgia space so why not i'm open to this crowd loved it they they absolutely did they did and so I, I, I love I the sign it. in the front row did you see the sign in the front row no i didn't it said don't you have mayor stuff to do Ah. Uh, i loved it now i thought it was funny i liked it it's, it's, it's all Let jokes. the man get his paychecks. He's 50, and he's going to main event some shows. Yeah, he is now, for sure. Yeah. So, I mean, that's that's a thing that – isn't that so funny? I think it was a year ago or whenever the hell it was we talked about, oh, will Kane be main eventing at 50 Will or 51? Will Jericho be main eventing? And look where we are now. Yeah. Kane <laughs> reuniting with Daniel Bryan mm -hmm. and Jericho having – and it seems like we say this almost every year – having one of the hottest runs of his career. Yeah, it's true. It's true. Now, speaking of hottest runs, although this is not exactly a wrestling run, and I feel like a broken record because I feel like we put this guy over a lot, but I got to talk about Kevin Owens. And even non-wrestling fan, Sean, if you see that clip from Tuesday night in, uh, in Montreal, you're going to love Kevin Owens, even if you're not a wrestling fan. So a while back, for anybody that's not familiar, Kevin Owens had been off Twitter for a while. He got re-verified with the fancy blue check mark that Sean has. <laughs> he, he got re-verified. And his profile, where normally people will just write words, you know, like where you're from and all that. He wrote a paragraph for that profile. And the paragraph basically said, I got re-verified because I want Shania Twain to perform a song called When For Me when, she's, uh, when she does Montreal because I'll be there. And that was his Twitter. It got picked up and went viral. There was even uh, one of the Canadian news publications picked it up and ran with it as a story. So on Tuesday night, Kevin Owens, true to his word, was at the uh, Shania Twain concert at the Bell Center. Something tells me that somebody hooked him up because he had pretty oh, damn without a doubt. pretty damn good tickets. And uh, I'm sure somebody wised Shania Twain up, even though she made like she didn't recognize him at first because uh, she left the stage and beelined right over to him. He was holding a, a cute little sign that he claims he made that had an eye and a heart. It basically said, I love you, Shania. Uh, and then she grabbed him, went on stage with him. And here's a clip. So this this ran on uh, Feifel's YouTube channel. If you want to see the entire thing, go to Feifel's YouTube channel. You can see the whole thing. I just pulled uh, two minutes of this real quick. And Nigel, go ahead and put that up. This is really awesome. The problem is, is that when I watch you in the ring, you are not like the typical like nice Canadian. Canadians are known for being so nice. I'm nice. I mean, Canadians are nice. But this guy in the ring, I mean, he's a badass. He's got some pretty bad behavior going on. So listen, um, I can't really condone a request like that from such a bad guy like you. I mean, you're not a bad guy, but you're a bad guy in the ring. Let, let's call it a difference of opinion. I think I'm a great guy, I'm a great wrestler, and uh, I don't know, I, I think I've been doing pretty well for Canada, I've been representing Montreal very well. I think you should, I think you should consider singing win for me. Okay, so listen, I'll make you a deal. Uh, who's, uh, let me think here, I don't know how we can do this, because Wynn is not in the show, but tell me, who, what, who's your biggest rival? Well, Shania, right now I'm actually having a lot of trouble with a fellow by the name of Braun Strowman. 
and uh, yeah, I guess that would be him. Ron Strowman. Okay, so listen, I'll make a deal with you next time. Uh, well, no, if you can beat Ron Strowman, the challenge. Then the next time I'm in town, I will see you win. Shania, here's the thing. Yeah, I'll take it. Yeah. Oh, it's bedazzled. Here's the thing, Shania. Have you seen Braun Strowman? The guy is seven, seven feet tall, like 500 pounds, maybe more. Now you're asking me to beat him? Come on. So now, seriously, I, I've been doing pretty well. I, I represent Canada as good as I can. I've won so many championships. That's got to be worth something, right? And I, you know what? I have more Twitter followers than you do. Come on. That's true. But you know what? Um, yeah, you know what? I, I was going to say that don't impress me much, but I do want to say that does impress me. You are awesome. You really are awesome, right? Kevin Allen. And we're back. I had, uh, it was so hard for me to choose a couple minute clip out of that, Sean, because that whole yeah. thing was awesome. And it was so yeah. hard to pick. I ended up picking the uh, the part when he was accused of being heel, essentially. And he said, let's call it a difference of opinion. That's where I started. <laughs> That's where I started. He was so good doing that. And he was so quick and thinking on his feet and stuff. How many wrestlers in WWE today, you could probably count them on two hands, Sean, maybe one hand would be able to yeah. do what he did on the fly. On that, on that, uh, in that appearance, he was he was awesome. How can you not love Kevin Owens? He's such a natural. He's really good. Yes, I, d I didn't even know Shania Twain was Canadian until I heard her speak French at the beginning of this video. What? I, you know, I don't really check up where people live. I mean, I knew that she sang country music. I didn't know country music was huge outside of you know Jocelyn in your office loving country music. You didn't know but... Shania Twain? Do you know Celine Dion's Canadian? Yeah, I knew that. She doesn't sing country music either. That's also oh, that's how you knew because she doesn't sing country music. Well, I mean, no, it's the fact that she speaks French all the goddamn time. <laughs> that weird but, wizard language. Yeah, yeah the wizard she's, language. She's, yeah, she's, yeah, yeah, yeah. She is also a wizard, confirmed. I actually didn't. To be know. honest, if you were to tell me Celine Dion revealed as wizard, I would be like, well, yeah, that makes sense. It makes sense, Of course yeah. she's a wizard. Uh-huh, uh-huh. I actually didn't know Shania Twain spoke French. I was impressed that she spoke any French because she's not from Quebec. Yeah, she's from uh, Ontario, yeah. That's right, that's right, yeah. But uh, And the place was sold out. I mean, the Bell Center for a concert could probably hold 20,000 people. I was impressed by that. You yeah, I, I thought, I mean, that's that's been the thing. Like, these acts that haven't necessarily had a lot of play in yeah. quite a while do well on the road. Do you think WWE will grab a clip of that and put it on Raw next week? Because they should. I'm pretty sure they had somebody filming. Oh, they I, did. I would, I would, or, no, I'm assuming. I'm not okay. reporting. I'm assuming. You bring up Braun Strowman. You bring yes. up this. You bring up that. Yes, I agree. Because she made a point of asking who he's feuding with. And, uh, and, you know, that's interesting. And uh, TMZ picked up the story, too, and ran with it. So if I'm WWE, if they don't air a clip of that on Raw next week, they're foolish. You're missing out on an opportunity. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. I, I think they should really capitalize on it. I agree. So, you know, I've heard of some rare injuries, Sean, in, in years past. You hear, <laughs> you, you, you hear about guys like, you know, they slipped on ice on the street and they broke their leg. Or maybe they, uh, you know, dropped a knife and then, you know, somehow they slipped and cut their thumb. <laughs> you, you hear about rare injuries like that. I cannot recall ever hearing in all my years of following wrestling a guy getting bitten by a police dog at a live event. That's, that's a first that I've ever heard of that. And I questioned if this is legitimate, but apparently it is, right? This actually happened legitimate so Shinsuke, Shinsuke Nakamura on Monday night at the Smackdown show in Bakersfield California was bitten on the leg by a police dog at the arena I want to know what Shinsuke was doing to get himself in a situation where he got bit by the police dog <laughs> one of those maybe but uh, he got bit your dog is broken <laughs> one of those but here's what's interesting so he missed the Smackdown taping on Tuesday because of the injury we don't know how severe it is, but whatever. This Friday, he is scheduled to headline a live event in Tokyo. Have you heard anything? Is he going to be able to make that shot? Because obviously, he's the headliner for that show. Yeah, I've reached out to WWE. Haven't heard anything back yet. <laughs> First time I've had to reach out about a dog bite. Yes. 
That's such a weird thing. As somebody says, that's some Bakersfield shit. But, <laughs> yeah, man. That's weird. I've never that's heard of that. That's so weird. And they, they knew about it much earlier than they announced because he was already factored out of the script for SmackDown Live hmm. Tuesday evening. So they knew that he wasn't going to be able to make that. Just weren't really going to say much about it, I guess. But hmm. I hope, I mean, obviously it'd be a big hit if you can't make that show. I noticed that you posted on maybe maybe Twitter about a lot of the top talent that wasn't used on SmackDown this week. Yeah. AJ hey. Styles, the Iconics, Samoa Joe, Charlotte, and Randy Orton had time off anyway. But uh, Carmella, Asuka, lots of people because they, they were doing a lot of media and stuff. But right. I know that several of those people were back the day before. So Right, right. Now, man, this, it's, it was a nothing happening show until the last five minutes. There have been, I don't know if it's conspiracy theory is the right term, but there have been theories that because WWE now has all this guaranteed money locked in for five years, that they care less about making stars and care more about just producing content. Do you think that that plays into the, into the decision? Let's not have the champion on the show. Let's not have Samoa Joe on the show. Let's not have Shinsuke Nakamura on the show. Do you think that's I, part of the, the thinking? I don't think you have to have everybody on every show. I think it's a good thing, but unfortunately, generally when that happens, it's because they don't have anything for that person. Ronda Rousey isn't on the show, not because they have some master creative plan. It's because they think they can't hold the interest with her for this month period. It's one of those, oh, the author's a pain art on the show because they're not in the title picture and we don't want to put them in something not creatively satisfying. Well, who's that on? That's on creative. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm okay with a few of these people not being on the show, but man, those are a lot of your heavy hitters. Oh, yeah, it That's is. That's a ton of them. It is. And as a result, you got a nothing happening show. You had a U.S. title match, ended in a fuck finish, main event, fuck finish. Is that an industry term? Is that an industry term? It is now. Term? It's a fightful term. Fuck finish? <laughs> fuck finish. <laughs> you had Becky Lynch beating... Sonya Deville, whatever. Neither of them are in a program. Okay. A lot of nothing happening on this show, and that's really unfortunate. It wasn't bad to any egregious level or anything. It was just you could have missed it if you – all you need to watch is the YouTube clip of the main event. That's it. Yeah, it's normally what I do on Tuesdays normally. Oh, like I was saying off the air, wouldn't you know that this week I was able to catch the last hour live, tuned into the SmackDown post, post uh, show podcast, and it goes off the air in 33 seconds. Yeah, it seems to be the trend, right? <laughs> it feels like it. Whenever I have the chance to watch live, it fucks up. It seems like it. I don't know how that is. Let me ask you this, uh, Ronda Rousey. Do you? I understand what you're saying about the month off, creative, and all that. I get all that. Did her Hall of Fame thing have anything to do with it? Because it falls the first week of July, no? She's wrestling two days later. After she is, after the Hall of Fame thing. Yeah, she's wrestling at MSG two days later. So the night of that UFC show, she's scheduled to be at MSG. By the way, she wasn't on Raw this weekend. She was wrestling a couple days before. Hmm. Uh, also, another Raw she's scheduled for within that 30 days. So I had all these people saying... Movie obligations, Hall of Fame, they're building tension. Shut up. Yeah, you bullshit. Did you see the bullshit. Twizzler commercial? Was she in a Twizzler commercial? She did a Twizzler commercial. Oh, yeah. I didn't see that. My yeah. wife loves Twizzlers. So. It's posted on Fightful.com, the, the, the site that you are the managing editor for. That's where I, I saw I it. I literally didn't see it. Was it in the fight size? <laughs> yeah, I think Update? so. Update? Yeah. Okay, yeah, that's... Then I saw that. I mean, I saw that it was posted. I didn't watch the Twizzler commercial. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You've probably seen the concept, right? It's when they got somebody looking serious, and then they put a Twizzler in their face, and they break out laughing. No, if not, but I will. That's basically what they did with Ronda <laughs> Rousey. You've seen it, right, Nigel? No, I, I haven't I, seen oh, yeah, it. That's what they do. I see some weird apologists about shit like this, man. Like, people saying, oh, well, they're not confident in her mic skills. And I'm like, what show have you been watching since the first night she was on there? Because she has been exceptional. She's been great. Yep. Microphone since then. I agree. Uh, I guess you could say Stevie Ray was exceptional in the microphone because he called people fruit booties on commentary. Here's part of my interview with him that, that I posted a while back. But we never really got to give you the, the full experience on the list in your boy, mainly because Melissa screwed things up. Here you go. <laughs> we talk about media and, and podcasting, and obviously you had a, a broadcast career in WCW. Uh, your brother Booker had been involved in that in recent years since he became less active in the ring. When that first happened, did he bend your ear or try to get any insight on that? No, because we used to, uh, uh, me and my brother, uh, 
that is stuff we used to joke about with each other. You know, mm-hmm. we would be in the hotel room or riding from town to town, and one of the things that we used to do to amuse each other is uh, imitate different commentators that we hear. Which ones? Uh, oh, which ones would get the best? Whoever. Play? It didn't matter. It didn't matter. <laughs> whoever. Gordon, Gordon Soley, Gene Oakland, whoever. You know what I'm saying? And not just the end people that we see on television, on ESPN or some of the other shows or somebody doing a football game. And we would just, you know, kind of um, make each other laugh about who can do a joke. And we'll put our own words in it, but we're trying to use someone else's voice. So that was, uh, <laughs> it was always a hobby of ours, even from, from being kids. It was always a hobby. That's something that we never know we you know what I'm saying? It would come around like it did years and years later, but we kind of got practice on it by practicing with each, with each other and, you know, amusing each other. All right. Blad, we're back. <laughs> <laughs> I was telling Nigel off the air, I don't have a lot of content this week because it's a slow week, but I do have two stories this week, Sean. Oh, yeah. And uh, I'll, when, when we come up to the topics that are related, I'll tell the stories. I think you'll like them. I want to talk about Leo Rush. Mm-hmm. Uh, so he debuted on 205 Live this week, and uh, WWE.com posted a video of him meeting Daniel Fischel. Nigel, do you know who Daniel Fischel is? No. She was Topanga on Boy Meets World. Oh, yeah, okay. And there's a, there's an independent promotion in California called Pro Wrestling Gorilla, PWG, that for some reason attracts celebrities to their shows. Okay. So Daniel Fischel's a fan of that stuff. Uh, who's the chick from Modern Family? Uh, so- Sophia Vergara. Sophia Vergara. Her and her husband, Joe something. Her post was actually great. I'm not a ce- I, I'm not <laughs> I'm not into celebrities, Nigel, but they are fans of PWG as well. And uh, Daniel Fischel became a fan of Leo Rush because of PWG, and uh, and they would exchange messages on social media. So I'm bringing this up because she was at the SmackDown taping this week, and WWE.com posted footage of him backstage, and she was being walked through the back and saw him, and went over and gave him a hug and everything. So. Uh, he debuted on 205 Live, and let me tell you, man, I watched the match. It was against uh, Dewey James. This kid is insane. He is insane. Yeah, not, not as great as the fantastic jobber they found. Yeah, <laughs> Dewey James. He was a wonderful jobber. Yeah, he a was. Wonderful jobber, but he yeah. was. I've been saying this for a long time. I thought Leo Rush or Rick, Ricochet are the new Rey Mysterio yes. for WWE. Yes. I and agree. as much as I like Ricochet, I think Leo Rush has more potential in that regard. Yes, he because does. Because of how young he is, and and the charisma factor too. I think the only the yeah. only the only thing with him. So so this match. I mean, obviously he's smaller than than Ricochet, and so he does fit the Rey Mysterio mold long term more than Ricochet. You talk yeah. about athleticism out of this kid, doing nip ups, turning it into 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 kicks and stuff like that. He's so athletic and quick. Uh, the only thing about this kid more so than a ricochet is I hope he can keep his head on straight because we know what happened when Emma was let go and he posted some stuff on social media and you know, he's, he, he is very charismatic, but you can tell that he's got some pompousness and arrogance to him sure. too. And if he can keep his head on straight, there's a big future for this kid because he, you talk about a showcase match. That's what that match was on 205 Live. It was a showcase match. And if you guys haven't seen it, go on YouTube and look it up because he was spectacular in that match. Yeah, I'm going to talk about this more on the Fightful Select Weekender podcast tonight, but it was it was a great display. He did a lot of really athletic things like stopping on a dime and changing direction. He did it several times. Which yeah. Is not easy to do. Like yeah. uh, it's it's very very difficult. The first time I saw him live was at the NXT tapings last year and boy, and I got to see him against I think Velveteen Dream. I'm pretty sure. Oh boy, that was a fun fun start and He's just special, man. Yes. And even the things that Ricochet does, I think Leo can do it just a step above. Plus, he's six years younger. Right. If he keeps his head on straight, he's got a 15-year WWE career at least ahead of him. I agree. And can be something very special. I love him taking off the jewelry and stuff. Yes. Even after the bell rang. Right. That's a good touch. Whoever thought of that, good, great idea. Yeah, and and again, he's just he's got personality. He's got a sense of humor. He's got charisma, but he's got some attitude. And so we'll see we'll see what happens with that. I actually went on YouTube to look up because I remembered hearing about it. I'd never seen it. Leo Rush against Ricochet in PWG, mm-hmm. uh, and I, I watched the match this morning. And uh, I got to say, I'm not a big fan of the Lucha Libre style. 
because to me that style comes off choreographed and it comes off i don't know not not the way i like to see a wrestling match my complaint about that leo rush ricochet match is that a lot of it was like a lucha libre match where they were just doing a lot of flips and counters and and stuff like that i'm not a big fan of that but athletically it, it, it's quite the spectacle if it makes sense within the course of a match i love it you see a lot of wrestlers that do the handspring into the ropes if i see somebody do that stand with a dazed opponent like I see so often, I think that's stupid. If you're doing it to reverse an Irish whip, mm-hmm. Tajiri used to do that. And he was that great. makes sense. Yep. You're you're reversing the momentum, you're kinda of throwing them for a loop, but if your opponent is standing there and you hit a handspring into the ropes, I'm really confused, especially when it's into a cutter. I'm like, why why wouldn't you just hit him with the diamond cutter right mm-hmm. there? If anything, that negates momentum. Really weird, but Leo Rush and Ricochet both have Oh, so much potential. And it's good that WDB is open to hiring people like this because I said for a long time, and I'm sure Shane Helms did it when he was an agent there because we talked about it weekly when we had the Shane Helms podcast. People wrestled the same in Impact for a long time. And by that, I mean they all wrestled like Mike Bennett. Mm. All of them. You see their top guys now. Eli Drake, you'll see him do a springboard moonsault or something. You Mm -hmm. don't see most guys with his level of charisma and his – his personality have to resort to that, but he knows that he's got to step up and do something different. Now, Impact has too many people that are just little X Division guys that don't really stand out that much. And I think Leo Rush, even though there are a lot of guys who wrestle that cruiserweight X Division style, mm-hmm. he can go a step beyond that. Absolutely. And do something that they can't do. Yes. And I like that. I mean, as, as athletically gifted as Cedric Alexander is, I would challenge him to try to do the stuff that Leo Rush did in his debut this week. He just he wouldn't be able to. That's yeah. just athletically Leo Rush is really gifted. So we'll see what happens. Here's an interesting one. Uh, so we saw Sami Zayn at Money in the Bank get squashed by Bobby Lashley, and he got pinned after a uh, standing vertical suplex. I think two yes. of them. I think two of them. And I remember watching that, thinking, well, that was kind of that kind of fell flat. That was kind of uh, you know insignificant. Then Sami Zayn is off TV. We hear rumors that he's hurt. He uh, did an interview this week with WWE.com, and he said in the interview that he actually has two torn rotator cuffs in both shoulders. Can you imagine? He wrestled on that, Sean. He wrestled on that. He did live events, and we're not talking squash losses. He did 10, 15, 20-minute matches with two torn rotator cuffs, talking in the interview about how he would have trouble pulling the bed sheets onto himself, but when he would get out there and do a match, I guess adrenaline kicks in. He said, I was able to do it kind of thing. Uh, unbelievable that this guy had two torn rotator cuffs. So he went to Birmingham, Alabama to uh, Dr. James Andrews Clinic. He had surgery already on the right shoulder. He's got to wait six to seven weeks for that to heal. Then they're going to do surgery on the left shoulder. And he is hoping to be back by WrestleMania next year, which is more than nine months away. So uh, what a situation for him. Two torn, it's, it's just, it's unbelievable that he wrestled for that long with that injury. It's impressive. Yes. It is impressive. So yes. All the dipshits that talk about, oh, I can't believe that Sami Zayn is a tough guy because of how he looks. Well, now you fucking know he's a tough guy. He wrestled through two messed up shoulders. Creatively, he could use the time off. I agree, yes. I agree. Because they weren't doing anything with him. He I was agree. in one of the all-time worst feuds in WWE. Yeah, this is the best time for him to be gone. Yes, it and, is. And, and hopefully, unfortunately for him, if he thinks he's going to be back for WrestleMania season... Usually that means he'll be back the night after WrestleMania and not actually for WrestleMania. And not get the big payday. Yeah. Yes, correct. Yeah. I want to get your thoughts, and I don't want this to be a negative podcast, Sean. All right? <laughs> don't want this, this to be a negative podcast. We, Nigel, we're analytical, Sean and I, right? We, we, we pick things apart and we analyze them, but I don't want this to be negative. But I do want your thoughts, Sean, on two storyline continuity and believability issues that came up this week in WWE, and I'll give you my opinion. You give, you give me your opinion. First one is about Nia Jax. Uh-huh. All right. So she started 2018 as a heel. She went into WrestleMania, turned babyface. Alexa was uh, making comments about her weight and all of that. 
turned Nia babyface, goes into WrestleMania challenging Alexa Bliss for the Raw Women's title, beats her, wins the Raw Women's title. Then, that was in April. Then in May at Backlash, she has a, a rematch, Alexa Bliss. Nia Jack beats her again to, to uh, defend the title, and then Nia Jax cuts this promo about anti-bullying and believe in yourself and, and all this bullshit. That was in May. Then a week after that, they announced that Nia Jax has challenged Ronda Rousey and then they tell the story about, oh, because she knows this is the time to beat her. Ronda's going to get good, and this is the time to beat her kind of thing. And for no reason other than who her challenger was, Nia Jax started acting like a heel again. And she started mocking the armbar, and she started, you know, trying to intimidate Ronda. And she was acting like the bad guy, beating up on Natalia, and then kind of feigning concern and all that kind of stuff. Then they do the match at Money in the Bank. Alexa cashes in. And now on Raw this week, Natalia's going out there. To face Alexa. Alexa's got Mickey James. Uh oh, Natalia's by herself. No, she's not. Here comes a smiling, happy Nia Jax, high five Natalia, going out we with her together. We spent the week together in Lake Tahoe. <laughs> <laughs> so Nia Jax essentially has warped back three months. She's actually gone into a time warp and she's gone back three months. Um, what do you think? Trash. Yeah. It's really not good at all. When you Creatively value the the brand more than building individual stars to prop up the brand creatively it suffers yes now I, i'm here before people go well they just said what billion dollar <laughs> deals what are you talking about <laughs> uh, not where's the glasses stars. where's the glasses man they're not here they're in they're oh. not deep for them for oh. months I, oh. need, I need to keep them here i will take them on vacation with me because i'm blind but you can't tell me they're doing their best creatively. I it's mentioned this earlier. Authors of Pain were off the show for months. It took them two months to debut Sanity. Andrade C. and Almas has had two matches against local jobbers in two months, and they haven't even delivered on an advertised match with Sin Cara, whether he's hurt or not. You know, they gotta they need to put him on TV. It is an absolute lack of of creative ability, yeah, whether sloppy. it be from Vince McMahon or yeah. the team itself, it's real bad. It's really bad. And and here's the problem. They always talk about the casual fans. Like, you have your smart fans and you have your casual fans and the raw audience when it's really up in, in viewers is because the casual audience, and that's what they always claim. The casual audience isn't this dumb, Sean. The casual audience is going to see Nia Jax coming down the ramp smiling to be with Natalia, thinking, wait a second. Like, two weeks ago, she beat her up and... Her training partner. Right. Her training partner, too, right. is embroiled because that's the new Natty's a heart. Did you know she's a heart? Right. Her new one is, hey, did you know that she trains with Ronda Rousey? Right, right. Training partners. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's really bad. The other one I want to talk about is Brock Lesnar. And we have talked about how the wrestling fans today, most of them are smart. They know what's going on. They're on the internet. They know what's going on behind the scenes. They're not dumb. Going into WrestleMania, one of the reasons that the Roman Brock story didn't work, and one of the reasons that the crowd didn't go with Roman, aside from the fact that they already are rejecting him and all that, is because they didn't believe the story. When Roman was saying, I haven't gotten any opportunities, he gets all the opportunities, he's a part-time guy, he doesn't care about you guys, he only cares about the money. The people knew this. They knew Brock is all about the money, and Brock has X number of appearances on his contract, and he has the whole time that he's been, been with WWE this run, and the fans understand that the whole time. And I think they still respect Brock's ability and you know the, the, the things that he can do that not everybody can do, but they understood it. So now here they are going into uh, Extreme Rules. They claim we're going to do a multi-man match to determine a number one contender, and that number one contender is going to challenge Brock at a date to be determined for the Universal title, and they decide that Roman and Bobby Lashley are going to be two guys in. This week, Heyman writes this big thing on Facebook about bullshit, and then they say, Kurt Angle posts a tweet, and he says that that uh, Brock won't honor his commitment, and so they're canceling the multi-man match. As a wrestling fan, I watched that thinking, well, number one, no matter when Brock defends, you need a number one contender, right? Yeah. Whether he defends at SummerSlam or not, and if he doesn't defend, he'll get stripped of the title and they'll, they'll figure something out, but you need a number one contender. You do. Right? And so to me as a viewer, it just, it just, it's hard for me to grasp that story. And so what I'm wondering is, is if the company's vision was we want to do Roman and Bobby and we don't know any other way to get there. And so let's have them be the first two guys in this match and the match falls apart and then they're the only two guys announced. And 
You know, that, it seems like that's well, the well, only way they could think of to get there. Let's talk about the benefit, at least. Backs up your boys' consistent claim that Lesnar's deal ain't that long. His deal, one more match, whenever it may be, whether it be whenever the hell it is, until they, they are able to come to some, some, some sort of extension. There are just logic holes everywhere, man. Yeah. Why couldn't Braun Strowman come out next Monday and say, get your ass here now, I'm cashing in money in the bank. Doesn't that override whatever the hell Brock Lesnar has? If he doesn't show up, wouldn't Braun like, essentially win by forfeit? I mean, Not the title, though, I don't think. I mean, if he doesn't show up, I mean, Count Shawn out. Michaels had to forfeit the title to Dean Douglas one time because he couldn't compete. So, I mean, there is a precedent for that in some regard. It's bad. Yeah, it's, it's bad. It's stupid, man. And I think that the fact that so many people are going to know about the contract status kind of takes away. When people really know that something they don't want is going to happen, they revolt against it. They didn't want Roman Reigns and Jinder Mahal. Right. They didn't want that. Right. If if it's predictable and it's good and it's something that the crowd wants, then they'll then they'll react positively to it. By the way, independent superstar MJF is in our Periscope chat and said that my man bun is too loose. Piss <laughs> off, mate. Piss off. You'll if, be able to catch for, him at All In in a couple of months. For what it's worth, I've been telling Sean to ditch the man bun because uh, I don't know. Just ditch the man bun. And I think he Cash does it now. Money. He does it now to spite me. This is why he has the man bun going now. <laughs> I do it because it looks a lot worse with my hair down. You think so? I mean, I don't know. It kind of got a Jesus thing going on a little bit. Is that what you're going for? No, I'm going for a donation to charity. You I'm know, when for. your hair is down, this just struck me, Nigel. It just South Park Jesus when your hair is down. <laughs> Jesus, I don't care. South Park Jesus. I know I am the He's savior a, of Fightful.com. Spe specific That's Jesus. goddamn sure. <laughs> <laughs> so one other thing I want to say is, uh, despite the fact that this story is hard to get into, I actually like what they're doing with Bobby Lashley. I love that he's showing some grit now and he's showing some attitude now. He needs to stop at the end of a segment smiling with the arms up like he does. Because it, it was weird when they lost the match and his music hit and he was like, "Yeah, <laughs> what, what the fuck are you posing for?" Yeah, it kills you it. Lost the match. It kills it. It kills it. But I like that they're and you know I think it was Vince Russo and Vince and Eric Bischoff years ago that said reality based storylines is is the way to go and that's what they were thinking right. Again, the fans know that Roman Reigns has gotten opportunities. He's main evented WrestleMania four years in a row. The fans know this. Lashley specifically said that and got a reaction for it and he got a reaction for it because the fans know All i right? love that what i didn't love was roman reigns whoever fed him that line if it was him he should be finger wagged <laughs> oh you mean you mean like you left and walked away 10 years ago you really want to get into that shit you really want to dig down and find out why bobby lashley left 10 years ago because uh it ain't so smooth right. not something wwe really wants out there all the time also a failure in MMA? Do what? <laughs> Pardon me. The man was 15 and 2. And Jimmy, you know, it's not easy to be 15 and 2 as a heavyweight, even if you fight 17 scrubs. Very true. Eventually, one of those big boys are going to connect with your chin and you're going out. Very true. And that never happened with Bobby Lashley. Never submitted. Yeah. Never knocked out. His, his one loss that got stopped via TKO was a fight where a fight got, he got stood up from the mount. And then one time he had the mount, a doctor checked the cut. They didn't give him the mount back. It was real weird. The man made millions in MMA. So to imply that the guy was somehow a failure is just, quite frankly, fucking wrong. I agree. I agree. But I love the way that Bobby Lashley handled the beginning of that because it's it's the reverse reigns. They, they do this to reigns. They're like, oh, we'll bring up stuff that people know about. Right. Brock Lesnar's never here. Right. Oh, they'll cheer him because of that. Well, no, they won't because they're not behind Roman Reigns that exactly. creatively. And they've tried Bobby, everything. With Bobby Lashley, it did work a little bit mm -hmm. because they had this utter horseshit intro for him. But when he showed up and he said, Roman, you've had years to do this and you haven't, that got people into him it a did. little bit. So yeah, it's true. it was the Reigns plan, but they used it on Reigns instead. Did you see the uh, headband incident? did where uh, Bobby Lashley was wearing a Nike headband. Shout outs to Nike. Hey, send me some headbands. <laughs> I'll wear them. The ref 
or the production saw it, the ref had to relay the message, and Bobby Lashley flipped it. And the referee was in the middle of doing the, okay, Roman's in a headlock, and I got to see if he's going to submit. And as soon as he got that instruction over his headpiece, he forgot about the headlock, got up, walked over to Lashley, said, Nick's the headband, went back over and went back to doing the referee submission thing again. So I thought that was good. And, and shout out to John Pollock, because I think he's the first guy that noticed that. Yeah. So shout out to him. Let's uh, go to Stupid People, Nigel. All right. This is a stupid song. It just goes on and on. You might find some meaning, but you would be wrong. All right, thanks to trevorstrong.org for the usage of the song. And once a month, I like to give a little explanation as to why the hell we do Stupid People News in the, rest, in the middle of a wrestling podcast. So this segment used to be called WWE's Excessive Usage of Stupid Nicknames. And we would talk about how many times they said the big dog and the architect and the goddess and all this bullshit. And we had actually had a guy, uh, Gilberto, who would actually count them for us Gisberto, every week. Yes. I'm sorry, Gisberto, who would actually count them for us. And what we discovered was that not only were things not getting better, they were getting worse. I think Corey Graves told you off the record that they're told to do all that. Uh, so it's all Vince McMahon. And so we decided, okay, this is redundant. It's not going to change. And we turned it into a Stupid People News thing, which still has Vince McMahon's face on the intro because it should. He, he earned it. He, he earned, earned it. it. He earned it. Also, I love when I go to the Trevor Strong Stupid Song on YouTube and I see people that comment, the listen you boys sent me here. Yes. There you go. So he's getting his happy. money's worth. Yep. <laughs> so this first one, Sean, some of these you might have heard of because they made the news. And this is one of them. It was reported by the Associated Press on June 21st. Did you hear about what Burger King Russia promoted as a World Cup promotion? I didn't. Okay. Did you hear this one, Nigel? Uh, yeah, I did hear about okay. it. Okay. So Burger King's Russia social media division. They have a history of doing questionable marketing, and, they, and they've, they've done stuff in the past. So what they did this time around, and Nigel's going to put up the thing in a minute, they put up an ad offering a lifetime supply of Whoppers to any Russian woman that can prove that she got impregnated by a soccer player during the World Cup. And the reason that Burger King Russia wanted to do this is that they wanted to ensure that uh, this type of act, or what is it here? They wanted to ensure the success of the Russian team for generations to come. Put up that ad, uh, Nigel, if you haven't already. Yep. Burger King uh, got it removed. Burger King said office got it removed, and they released a statement to the Associated Press. They said, we are sorry about the clearly offensive promotion that the team in Russia launched online. It does not reflect our brand or our values, and we're taking steps to ensure that this type of activity does not happen again. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, well, the idea of having a child is utterly horrifying to me anyway, but it's a lot of fun, Sean. Having to a run a promotion based on that? Yeah. How oh would you boy. how would you prove it because you'd have to get the DNA test from the like the it, what if it's Ronaldo? Ronaldo's not going to take a DNA test. Like we well, would have to if he were subjected, right? Maybe, but wouldn't you have to get him back in Russia first? That's a good point. But anyway, that's, that's what they a good did. Damn point. This next one was reported by the Daily Mail on June 22nd. This is a good one too, Sean. There was a woman in Wenling, China, and she rented a Ferrari 458. All right? The <laughs> rent Nigel's laughing already. The rental dealership reportedly paid over 600,000 US dollars for the car because it was an import. And I'm going to tell you a related story in a minute. But it was an import, so that's what they had to pay. The woman posted a video on social media as soon as she got behind the wheel for the first time saying that it was a saying it was her first time driving a Ferrari and that it was an amazing feeling moments later Nigel's going to put up the clip as to what happened I can talk over it right oh yeah okay and for for our, our listeners that aren't on video what happened was moments after she after she posted the thing about hey I'm, I'm so excited she spun out of control crossed the median on a busy city street and slammed into another car totaling the front end of the Ferrari I'm watching the video oh Damn! It's pretty bad. <laughs> oh, that hurts me in the heart. Yeah, I'm going to tell you a story, Sean. Go ahead. And this is a good story. About a year and a half ago, you I bought... stories. I do tell stories, but only when they're good. And this is good. Wow. Come on, shut up. This is wow. good. <laughs> a year and a half ago, I bought my wife a car for her birthday. I got her a, a Mercedes-Benz SUV. 
was going to say a Ferrari, no doubt. Yeah, no, no. Got a Mercedes-Benz SUV. We went to the dealership. We had ordered it in advance kind of thing. We went to the dealership to, uh, to talk about options and all that stuff. The dealer pulled me aside. And he said, um, do you plan to take this car out of the country? And I said, uh, not that I know of, why are you asking? And he said, I'm gonna be honest with you. You showed up here in a Chevy Malibu, which was my wife's old car, and it was a piece of shit. And uh, you showed up with a, with a little girl, because my thank, daughter thank was you, with Thank you, I drive us. a Chevy Malibu. Well, boy, didn't that work out, Nigel? <laughs> Hers was a piece of shit. Maybe yours is souped up. <laughs> you all see. You all are witnesses. He is Walmart, and my living conditions are unbearable. Her unbearable. Okay, you have a roof over your head and running water. You're doing all right. Well, you got I mean, electricity. Could fall in. This house is 150 years old. That was your choice. That wasn't mine. It was not <laughs> my choice. Oh. Anyway, to to finish my story. Uh, he told me that I fit the profile of a man that would buy a, a car like that Mercedes-Benz SUV and ship it off to China and sell it for double the price. And he said that that was a problem. And wow. uh, I actually had to sign a waiver. And the waiver said, you will not sell this car to a Chinese importer. And actually, I had to sign that. That's wild. Yep. And then you probably did it anyway. Thought about it when I heard about the value, Sean. But Damn. I didn't, but I thought about it. So when I heard that this Ferrari cost the dealership 600 grand US because it was an import, makes perfect sense to me, right? I'm excited for the next podcast where you tell me how shitty Jeep Liberties are as well, because... <laughs> okay, <laughs> for the record, I haven't seen your car. My wife's car was a piece of shit. <laughs> I haven't seen yours. Yours might be in better shape. All right. I, I mean, see the hashtag buy SRS a car going. Oh, yeah, I'm sure. You, I'm sure. I'm sure you didn't put it up. I didn't. Uh, one of our riders did. Sean, let me tell you, man. Whenever I would drive that thing on the highway and try to pass another car, I would hear the Malibu cry a little bit, all right? Yeah. <laughs> because it didn't have the power to overtake another car on the highway. Well, that car was a piece of shit. Yours could all be I all right. Say, as a wise man once said, you owe me a 10-second car. Okay. This last one is for the SRS file. And uh, this was reported Ready. by this was reported by CBS4 Denver on June twentieth. We have a video that we're gonna play, uh, but there's audio to the video. Uh, so let me set it up first, Nigel, and then I'll, I'll I'll throw it over to you. Sounds good. So there's a girl that calls herself Lynn Lou on Facebook, and she posted a video that has gone viral, and it's showing her secret to better skin and better health. All right, uh, I think that's a good place for me to uh, to to throw it to the clip. Put the clip up, Nigel. Sure. Holy <laughs> Why did you put that on the air? Why would you do that? Is that on YouTube? Uh, it was on Facebook. Facebook video. Facebook that lets you do anything. <laughs> oh, we're getting kicked off. Why do we could have just we could have just explained it, Jimmy? Oh no, it wasn't the same reaction. Look, look at the reaction I got out of you. <laughs> no. Look at the reaction I just got. I was saying to Nigel while that was playing, because for you guys listening to this, when the video plays, I can't see the video. I can only see Sean and Sean's reaction. I said to Nigel, please tell me we're recording Sean. Please tell me we're recording Sean. Goddamn thing we started streaming on Periscope. We're getting kicked the fuck off of YouTube right No, we now. won't. No, we won't. So to oh our... <laughs> <laughs> to our audio-only listeners that didn't get to see that, that was this girl that goes by the name of Lynn Liu. She was out uh, with her dog. <laughs> she was out with her dog, uh, had her dog pee into a cup, and then she down. They don't need to know. No, the, the audio people got to know. She had her dog pee into a cup. She drank the entire cup of, of dog pee, and she said that... <laughs> She said she was depressed and had bad acne and dog urine contains, this is according to her, dog urine contains vitamin A and E. And here's the most intelligent thing she says. It's also proven to help cure cancer, she says. Is it necessary for me to drink my dog's urine? No. But I'd do it anyway because it's sterile and I like the taste. <laughs> Truer words were never spoken, I guess. Man... I don't like to make fun of how people look because they can't help it. But when she turned around and she looked in the camera, I was like, yeah, you look like you drink dog pee. 
Maybe it's because I just fucking watched her do it. <sighs> but yep. man. Yep. Now, she's obviously a young girl and probably very impressionable. And, you know, I saw on her Facebook, she posts videos talking to her haters and all that crap. But that doesn't take away from the fact that on camera, she drank a cup of her dog's probably still very warm or even hot dog urine. And where is she, where is she from? Somewhere in the U.S. I don't know. Uh, it was reported by CBS for Denver. But that doesn't, mean, that doesn't mean she's from yeah. Denver. If she's from Denver and that's what she's doing to feel good, I don't know. I can if tell she's from you. Denver. I can tell you. Contrary to what you may believe, Jimmy, when I pitched the idea to go to Denver for my vacation this week, I didn't have drinking dog pee on my mind. I maybe, understand. Maybe a little something else. Hot dog. By the way, Sean, uh, they announced that it's going legal here October. Yeah, and no, I'm not talking about dr drinking dog piss is going legal in October. <laughs> That's not what I mean. Got to be nice to you for at least another year. Jesus. Oh, in order to come back next year? Is that your thinking? Uh, <laughs> there you go. So that's got to be one of the better stupid people things we've ever done because your reaction was gold. That's... It was gold. He's still, he's still like, reeling from it. Reeling? Yeah, that's a good word. I'm going to be <laughs> honest. That fucked me up, Jimmy. <laughs> <laughs> I have been sufficiently humbled. This is going in the clip channel, Sean. How, how do you this. get Sean to not talk about a raise? You figured it out. <laughs> <laughs> That's a subject changer right there. I can see it now. You, you talk, you've mentioned that I will be visiting your home on my Toronto vacation. You're going to have that shit queued up in your theater. I might. Just bam. You know something, Never Sean? Get the control I have over you, Sean Ross Sapp. The way my TVs are synced, Sean, I can play the same clip on every TV at the same time. I'll play that on every TV when you walk in, Sean. <laughs> You're gonna be like Shredder in the goddamn tech world. <laughs> now, oh my god, I cannot believe it. Somebody asked, "What did I just drink?" It's diet. Why <laughs> I? <laughs> and he's got like 16 cats. You know, here's the thing, Ugh. like, I try real hard to establish myself as a legitimate journalist, but on the podcasts, you gotta be a little more entertaining. Yeah, this you one's for fun. Be stoic, and that one took a lot out of me. I'm gonna need this break. Haven't, haven't we said, Sean, that this is, this is the most unique wrestling podcast in existence? I would say so, yes. And it's for reasons like this. Yeah. I would agree. People have lives outside of wrestling, so we, we, we hit both with this podcast. As man. we saw, some people don't. Some people don't. Very true. Some people don't. So I'm going to somehow shift it back to pro wrestling, Sean. I'm going to somehow shift it back. And I'm going to ask you a question. So uh, you said, I don't know where you said this, might have been on the SmackDown <laughs> podcast this week. <laughs> you said that the SmackDown commentators, when Sanity debuted on SmackDown last week, you said that you found this out. The SmackDown commentators were instructed, do not mention NXT during their debut. Explain, and why would that be? Why it would be? I don't know. And I asked people in the company, and they said, your guess is as good as mine. So why they would do it, I don't know. I mean, especially considering that NXT is being negotiated with Fox for Fox Sports 1 right now as we speak. So it doesn't make any sense to me. Mm -hmm. I think you would want to highlight this other show where they came from. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, that's how I find all kinds of stuff. I use that as a marketing tool all the damn time when I call fights for for uh, Premier MMA Championship or Absolute Action MMA, I'm like, hey, these UFC fighters came from here. Right. Now, I, I, I think it was Jeff on the post-Smackdown show that said that he understood it. And I think he said the reason they talked about NXT was saying Asuka because Asuka was so dominant. Uh, yeah. But otherwise, why highlight it? And I don't agree with that just because, like you said, this is where they came from. And NXT now is an established brand. The thing that I believe is that Vince McMahon is known to come up with impulse decisions. And he's yes. known he's known to come up with things such as you can't say belt, you can't say wrestler, that kind of bullshit. I think that along those same lines, he woke up one morning and said, I don't want to mention NXT for the once they hit the main roster, because that's just what he thought and he went with it. Yeah. And uh and to me it doesn't make any sense whatsoever. I, I'm with you. I'm with you. As 
I'll bring this up afterwards. But yeah, it's, it's stupid. It doesn't make any sense. No. You would want to highlight that brand, yes. accentuate that brand, yeah. let people know where it came from. And the the exact reason you just mentioned is why on Fightful.com you don't see a ton of storyline stuff until until literally ink is on paper about it. Yes. I don't report a lot of the storyline stuff because what benefit is there if it happens? Oh, cool. I knew what was going to happen in wrestling. Uh, neato. If I get it wrong, people are going to say, oh, you trashy shit site getting shit wrong. When yeah. I get scripts and it has info, that's when that's when I'm like, all right, might be almost too late for even Vince McMahon to change. Then I'll report stuff like that. There's no benefit. But something like that is so weird. And I, I do have an article coming out. I've teased it for weeks about production habits and lines that are fed that, that will be set to release while I'm on vacation. Or maybe it's – I've got a lot of moving parts there, but a lot of interesting stuff in that regard. So moving on, I have something uh, great for you, man. Oh, yeah? I have a big surprise for Sean Ross App because it just so happens – that your favorite wrestler and rapper, Enzo Amore, a.k.a. Real One, posted a new rap on his Instagram account. Uh, this rap is called A Story of Real and Fake. And for oh, you, yeah. Sean, for you, Sean, because he's your favorite wrestler and rapper, I asked Nigel to grab a little clip. And here's a clip of Enzo Amore's latest rap that he posted. Get a Kleenex for my ex, I'm a flex. I'm playing, I ain't talking tissue issues. There ain't enough for us to trees for the tears or the greed. I'm talking bigger issues, like issues of malnourishment in communities that should be flourishing, but the birth of a nation was through a surrogate, fathered by a government of racial discouragement. A bastardized set of principles and precedents written by slave-owning presidents, not to mention the aforementioned Declaration of Independence. When 56 men dip ink on those pens, 41 names old slave. Uh. <laughs> now I gotta say while that clip played Nigel was laughing so Nigel I want your thoughts uh, I mean at the beginning like, we didn't play that part but at the beginning there was like this whole ramble where he was like I don't know if people are gonna be able to keep up with this and then he goes on to like say the most generic things about slavery and injustice in the US it was like, Melissa okay. says put the dog pee girl back I hate this <laughs> <laughs> that's way better take <laughs> yeah yeah so, uh, in related Enzo Amore news... Look, you just try... You know I'm going on vacation tomorrow. You're just like, let me fuck with him as much as I possibly can. I'm having <laughs> fun this week, man. I'm having <laughs> fun. fun we, wanna, we want to entertain, but we also want to keep it wrestling related well, to the best putting, we can, right? Enzo's rap video up there is a good way to not entertain. Well, but your reaction's entertaining. That's true. Fair. So, uh, on the, he, Enzo was on the Stone Cold podcast, and I know that Stone Cold got some heat because, well, it wasn't him that put it up there, but somebody on Stone Cold's podcast page wrote about the major buzz that Enzo's song got, which is bullshit. But anyway, uh, he was on the Stone Cold podcast, and I was talking to you this morning, and you said that he confirmed your report. I mean, the thing was, WWE were under the impression that he knew about the accusations ahead of time. Vince McMahon, according to Enzo, mind you, said, you got to tell me about stuff like this. And he's like, well, I just got a random email from somebody claiming to be an investigator a month ago around Christmas. Well, that's when you tell them. That's when you look into it. You contact whatever police department is involved. Not just your attorney. You have your attorney get, get all that shit squared away. You handle it. So there that you was, go. I mean, he, he went he went out and said, I didn't know anything about this ahead of time. Then on an interview with Steve Austin, said that he did. However, you know, I've argued with one of our writers about this who said that he's acting guilty. I don't think he's acting guilty. I think he's mm -hmm. acting like any self-unaware jackass would act in this situation. He feels He feels like the situation has been rectified. And if he didn't do it, and I've, I've offered my personal – feelings on that because I have interacted with the accuser and she was very excited to get coverage. You know what? He He's capitalizing off of it and I think him saying that, I think he says a lot of the right things but then there are other situations where he says a lot of the wrong things and says a lot of dumb shit and really, I don't know, he, he he's his own worst enemy sometimes. Right. That, that's really the thing I can say and that guy is so goddamn talented. 
at things that are not rap music. But he is so goddamn talented. And you know what? Cass is too, to a degree. As we said last week, two peas in a pod, those guys. And there is still money to be made with those two eventually, somehow, somewhere. But man, it seems like they fit together really well. And it's those types of friendships, Jimmy, you see why they pair together so well, but then you also see why they can't stand each other. So, right, right. What a mess. Yep. Uh, go into your thing, and then uh, I'll get to my story after that. Stevie Ray, here he is, Fruit Booties. <laughs> Uh, you and your brother are obviously a part of the legendary tag team, Harlem Heat, but you all came from Houston. When you all were pitched Harlem Heat, w- was any part of you like, why not Houston? No. Actually, we pitched it. Oh, really? Yes. So how, how'd how that go down? And how actually, was that? actually we pitched it. Well. They wanted to uh, – I remember somebody wanted to call us Chicago Heat. And uh, – I think it might have been Dusty Rose. And a few other names came up, but we was like, no, we like Harlem Heat. Was that maybe because, a playoff you know, of the I Road Warriors him, was, being billed from Chicago? I have no unearthly idea and really, you know, those kind of things. I never really never gave credence to. But, I, we, you know, me and my brother's pretty stern about trying to have as much con- control of our careers as possible. And that was one of the things we all, you know, I can't remember how. Well, it was coming up with names for us. Me and my brother, you know, we was always pitched from 110th Street in Harlem. So we was like, no, we like Harlem Heat. And I guess they seen we was kind of stern on that. And they was like, okay, we'll go with Harlem Heat then. That's how it, that's how it pretty much happened. And that ended up working out pretty well, didn't it? Oh, yeah. I mean, if we discussed something amongst each other and we come to a conclusion on it, it's pretty much... That's what's in our quote right now. What's your relationship like with WWE? You haven't wrestled there, but you did appear in a video game uh, a couple of years back. How, how does that work for you? Do they ever contact you to uh, hit you up I for mean, a project I've been in, or anything? I've been, I've, I've been in a couple of things. I've been in a couple of video games up there, and uh, a few through the years, actually. And uh, they even doing new merchandise, I mean, things of that nature. But uh, uh, what, what your question was, have they contacted me to do what again? Uh, I mean, they've contacted you to do some projects and stuff, but but what's your relationship like with them, and how does that process work when they do want to do? I something mean, you know, like I'm that? under I'm under a legends contract, and you know, when you're under a legends contract contract, you're pretty much obligated to, uh, you know, whatever they come up with and ask you things like that, you know, appearance here and there every blue moon, and and that's basically about it, you know. But my relationship, uh, you know, pretty cool, I guess. That full interview over at YouTube.com slash Fightful. Just type in Stevie Ray. Also, we have several stories from it up on Fightful.com. Hit that keyword, Stevie Ray. i got to break some news to you, Sean. Okay. We've heard that interview before on the list on your boy. We've heard a, an excerpt from that interview because WrestleMania week, I had like six, seven different clips on there. We heard the exact one you just played. Uh, maybe. Because um, Nigel, Nigel and I looked at each other and I said... I've heard this before, and then Nigel said, yeah, the next part of it is this, and then boom, it played as soon as well, he said Well, there you go, and now you'll never hear it on here again. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> it is it is officially uncanned. It is out of the can. I think it was already out of the can, but we, yeah, we, just, part of it was. we put it out part of the can of again. So I'm going to tell you a story. Uh, it's a good story, and then I'm going to tell you a piece of wrestling news related to it, Sean. Because sure. it's good. So I, I know you know this as a guy in wrestling. Some of our listeners might not know this. Oftentimes, wrestlers are booked for non-traditional events, right? Mm -hmm. Which means oftentimes wrestlers are booked for things outside of the usual, hey, we're doing this live show on this day, and here's your opponent, and it's going to be in a little arena in front of 500 people, whatever the case may be. An, An example that I personally have was I know of a businessman in the Toronto area, and he's wealthy and all that, and every year he flies in wrestlers just to go party with at the clubs. Yeah. And when I first met this guy, he said to me, I don't know if you're busy uh, in two weeks, but I'm bringing in Ric Flair, Brutus Beefcake, and uh, Terry from uh, Three's Company, and, sure. La- and Larry from Three's Company, and we're going to hit and we're gonna hit the clubs. And I, I a party. It was around Christmas time, and I couldn't make it in, whatever. A week before, because he told me what he paid these guys, and it was not, it was significant, right? A yes. week before, he, he played me a voicemail from Ric Flair, and the voicemail from Ric Flair said, with all the Ric Flair-isms and the woos and everything, it basically said, something's come up, 
and I'm not gonna be able to make it and I'll get back to you and we'll figure something out, blah, 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 blah. And the businessman looked at me and he said, I'm gonna go to the airport the day that his flight is scheduled and I bet you $1,000 cash, he's gonna be standing on the curb waiting for me because he needs the money. And sure enough, Ric Flair was there at the airport and he went out with the guy and I heard all the stories about Flair putting on the robe in the club and apparently they lost beefcake after the first club, didn't know where he ended up. And <laughs> Terry from Three's Company said, if you don't give me Coke right now, I'm going home. God. This is allegedly, this is what I was told. The reason I'm bringing this up is because I just heard of an event that takes place in Toronto every year called Slammin' for Shabbos. And Nigel's already laughing. Yeah. Nigel's already laughing. And apparently this past Monday, June 26th, was the 30th anniversary of this thing called Slammin' for Shabbos. It's a fundraiser. Proceeds go to a, to a charity con called Tom Che Shabbos, which is a charity that provides food to Jewish families in need in Toronto. They do the show in a backyard of a house. They did like a $55,000 live gate. Yes. And now... U.S. U.S. Yeah, you can't really call it a gate. It's yeah. not really a gate, but Unless they, there's an actual gate on the yard. Yeah, well, <laughs> but if you saw the footage of it, and Nigel's going to put up put up the the wrestling photo. Sure. This was not a say backyard of a mansion that spans an acre. This is a regular Toronto backyard where they put a ring in there. They have a, a couple rows of seats. You can tell that it's all friends and family that do this thing. And again, it's for charity, and so they ask for uh, donations. And I think they even have a minimum donation of like 150 bucks or something. And the photo that Nigel's putting up is from, I think, last year when they brought in Nikolai Volkov. The guys that produce this thing, they're, they're known as the Megan Boys. I don't know if you've heard of them, Sean. I have. They, uh, don't they do the uh, Iron Sheik stuff? Yes. So they promote the Iron Sheik. I know them from Toronto here. They promote the Iron Sheik. They're twin brothers. They mostly do weddings and bar mitzvahs and, and stuff like that. Uh, this year, for the Slammin' for Shabbos in the backyard of somebody's house... They, yeah. br they brought in Colt Cabana and David Starr, and they had them wrestle for the first ever Jew, <laughs> Jew North American Heavyweight Championship. And now I just got a photo of the belt. Obviously, they were inspired by the WWE title, uh, and they just kind of changed around some of the little jewels in order to make a different logo on the front. <laughs> but they call that the Jew North American Heavyweight Championship, and uh, Colt Cabana won that. Won that title. Fantastic. So I wanted to bring that up because obviously, again, that was not a regular wrestling show. It was done for people's friends and family in a backyard, but they, they flew Cabana in, they paid Cabana's guarantee, and so there he was doing that. Doing that. I think we lost you, bud. Yeah. Oh, and we just lost Sean. Ah. Oh, no, he's here. Oh, there he is. Okay. There he is. Mike went out there briefly. I'm. This gives me hope. This gives me a desire to compete on the front sidewalk of the 2323 for the fightful championship. Is that right? It can't happen. It can't happen. One day. But this is hey, I mean cool, a good booking for David Starr and Colt Cabana and the Megan boys. Apparently they know how to get shit going. Yeah, I, I and I had never heard of this before. I mean, I, I, I know of the Megans and, uh, and you know, they're big wrestling fans and they're not uh, formally trained wrestlers, but they'll always put themselves in matches and all they do is really sloppy finishing moves the entire match. <laughs> and that's what they do. And uh, yeah, but this is what happened. So that was interesting. And a side note about David Starr, he is going to be one of the participants in PWG's annual Battle for LA tournament taking yep. place in September. Matt Riddle is in it, and Jeff Cobb is in it, and Joey Janela, among others. But the guy that I want to mention is Pierre Carl Ouellettchon. Yeah, he's the darling of the independent circuit right now after WrestleMania weekend. That's what PWG does. They see who emerges WrestleMania weekend, and right. they usually book them. And he had a great match with Walter that weekend and is going to continue there. He's also in the Scenic City Invitational very soon, as, and in August as well. So... He's getting those bookings in. He's wrestled as much this year as he has any year in, I think, in quite a while. It's amazing. So, so longtime fans will remember him as Jean-Pierre Lafitte uh, in the in the mid '90s, the Pirate. Then he was one half of the Quebecers with Jacques Rougeau, and they won the WWF Tag Team Titles. Yeah. Uh, now he goes by the name PCO, which is short for uh, Pierre Carl Ouellet, uh, and he's going to be 51 in December, Sean. I think it's a great way. He, he rebranded himself without changing his name. He changed his wrestling style, which, to be honest, he was always known as a good worker. Right. But he's 50 years old, and he's getting bookings right now, which shows you 
if you adapt to the times, you can thrive. I don't know about thrive financially, but at least take a step up because he's sure as shit getting more bookings now than he would have had he not uh, had that outstanding performance. So That's good very for him, man. Yep, very interesting. Yep. So tell me, uh, I got one last thing on my list this week. Tell me about your chat with Kenny Omega. Oh, by the way, I want to give a shout out to the interview I did earlier this year with Raven before PCO's reemergence. He tagged with PCO. And in the middle of the match, he kind of read the crowd and he's like, let's do your Quebecers finish. Oh, yeah. And did it off the top because he, you know, he was Johnny Polo yep. with the Quebecers and they did the, uh, the bomb. Cannonball. Bombs away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So yeah, I was able to talk to Kenny Omega. I talked to him about his move from junior heavyweight up to heavyweight. And I asked him, are there things that you're not able to do physically? that you were able to do them because I mean, he's gained 20, 30 pounds since then of muscle. Like he looks great. But if you remember back then when he turned on AJ Styles, there was this promo where he said, I'm tired of starving myself to make junior heavyweight. And it's funny because you look at, you look at the transit transformation he's made physically and it supports that promo. Mm -hmm. And he said, no, because honestly I was working with a pretty bad neck injury that could have got a lot worse. And fortunately it didn't. I asked him about the E3 new day thing as well. And he said that he got it cleared from New Japan months ahead of time, but they didn't really understand the gravity of the situation. So when New Japan got a new president, he wanted to be very transparent and filled the president in, and the president loved the idea. And while he hadn't talked to the president in the days since that happened, in between when I talked to him, he said that he doesn't imagine that anybody's upset or angry or anything like that. He also put over Matt Riddle a lot. Uh, the full call is on... Uh, is or we have clips of the call rather up on fightful.com's youtube several stories that are going to come out of that leading up to the g1 special fightful will have a uh, presence at the g1 special as well we're uh doing a content share thing with our buddies over at pro wrestling unlimited and they're going to go there on behalf of us and themselves so looking forward to that too man that's and also we're going to have a presence at the daytona show that kenny omega is is doing too because john morehouse is going to be there so we're all over the place mm -hmm. What kind of a schedule does he keep? Like, so obviously he does the New Japan dates, uh, Ring of Honor dates. What else does he do? So that's that's the funny thing where somebody was like, oh, I don't know if he can wrestle that style every day, every week, and keep it up, and blah blah blah. And I'm like, he's wrestled as many matches as Dana Brooke has this year. Right, right. He's not on some crazy psycho wrestling schedule. And he said as much. Uh, that was the the next thing I had talked to him about was. Considering that you face Kenny Omega or Chris Jericho so late into his 40s, is that the type of thing you would want to do? And he said, that would be awesome and almost poetic if I could wrestle as long as the guy who I originally modeled my career after. And he said, as we expand globally, I don't think New Japan needs me wrestling on every single house show. Right. I think that, that me transitioning and doing things like E3 can help out New Japan globally and expand and make people say, oh, this is what New Japan is. So... You know, as far as a schedule, he didn't give me like a routine or anything, but he's wrestled straight New Japan shows. I think he's wrestled maybe 17 matches this year. Mm -hmm. And now that's before G1. That shit is about to get ramped up big time for G1. But mm -hmm. I think considering his style, it is good that he doesn't have to wrestle all the time. And that format really, really works for New Japan. I actually have a question. I meant to ask this on the air weeks ago, and I forgot, and it just popped in my head. And maybe people in the live chat can give me their opinion. So when I moved into my new house and was unpacking stuff that had been in boxes for a long time, I found a whole bunch of WWF pay-per-view DVDs, uh, oh, a, yeah. lot, a lot of them still in the packaging that were given to me because I used to, when I ran my old website, jimmyvan.com back in the day, the Canadian distributor of the WWF DVDs used to send me them every month in order to to cover them when i when i shut the site down i continued getting sent these dvds for like two years after i shut Which the site often down have bonus footage that wwe network does not have so would it be worthwhile to people to, for me to give those away as contest prizes yes i think it would be and that's what we'll do Hot all right dog. i got a whole box of them man so we'll we'll start I've giving got, them away i've got a ton of stuff that i've accumulated too that I've been sent from like people basically that's what they're trying to do they're trying to get promotion and like what am i going to do with, with some of this stuff so we're going to start giving some stuff away uh, we're going to do it various methods facebook twitter instagram on the shows on select we'll we'll really bury it up 
So it would serve you fellas very well to go like all those. Go ahead and do it. It's the right thing. So uh, that's it for me. We got about four minutes left. Do you want to play that video again of the uh, oh, of the girl? Don't. Please don't. <laughs> no, I'm kidding, Nigel. I'm kidding, Nigel. <laughs> oh, Nigel's getting ready to cue it up over there, Sean, but I'm kidding. Please don't. I'm oh, kidding. Oh, man. So we've got a lot of stuff going up this weekend, even though I am on vacation. We've got... I've got a new pilot series, essentially, of articles that I, I'm running, enhancement stories, where I talk to people who became regulars in WWE, WCW, ECW, Impact, about their experiences as enhancement talent. Like, before I talked to Gangrel, I had no idea that he wrestled Big Boss Man in 1988. And then, I didn't even realize he was essentially a regular jobber for the WWE in the mid-90s as Vampire Warrior. He wrestled dozens of matches there. So, if that catches fire... We'll do that. We have a Wikipedia fact check. We have a thing from Scarlett Harris comparing the stars of GLOW to the stars of WWE, which you know works even well. I'll do some editing to that to reflect what happened this week. But we have a ton of stuff. You know that Friday's Just, payday. Are you going to get the invoices up before you go on vacation? No, I will. That, that's the work I will be doing on vacation. Oh, because otherwise I was going to say, wait till you get back and then I'll take care of it. <laughs> yeah, I, I think I think we're all set there. <laughs> Friday morning, I will be doing invoices. So, uh, Fightful staffers who want paid before Monday, send it to my Gmail. And Mon my Monday's a Canadian holiday too, meaning that you have to is wait till Tuesday. Yeah, Canada wow. Day, Canada what? Day is July first, but because it falls on a Sunday, we have the Monday off this year. Wow, that's some bank stuff. Banks in America are like, oh, it's. National Hot Dog Day. We better close. <laughs> it's so weird, man. I'm like, why are you closed for Flag Day? I feel like that there's a lot of Canadian holidays. I don't know if you agree with me, Nigel. I feel like there's at least one a month. There's only two months, I think, out of the year. That, that don't, don't have, have a holiday. holiday. Yeah. Yeah, it feels like it to me, yeah. In America, let's see. There's February. doesn't have President's Day if we're talking banks. But there, there aren't really as many, but... We got family Probably day. good for morale, right? I mean, Nigel, do you like that you get about a day a month extra off? Oh, yeah. I'm thinking they should add two more in just to make it actually Even it month. out. Nigel, you need to stop talking. So, uh, I mean, come on. Feng shui on the calendar. I feel you. After this, don't forget FightfulSelect.com. Stupid People Extended. Got three good ones. There you go. That's all I got, man. I got this. It's a big jar of OMG from OMG.com. Seriously, guys, if you want a discount on this stuff, Check out the Fightful MMA podcast. We have a discount code on there. I am going to try to stream uh, Holy Smokes podcast on my personal Twitter next week. I want some more attention on that. Uh, definitely a downswing in MMA, but next week is a real big show. If you're even just casually interested in MMA, next week is the show to watch. We've got Stipe Miocic against Daniel Cormier, Max Holloway and Ortega, and Ganu and Derek Lewis. This UFC 226 show is loaded. Also, fun. yeah, a programming note, Fightful Select Weekender Podcast is tonight. I'm taking questions on there as well to make up for last week's show. And uh, the week after I come back, July 7th, I'm going to try really hard. I'm going to do a New Japan post-show podcast live. Then immediately after that airs, I'm going to try to go live with the 226 post-show podcast it's going to be a wild night at Fightful.com, and we have you covered for everything. Also, we have a presence at this weekend's Ring of Honor shows. We're everywhere, damn it. Follow us at Fightful Online. Most importantly, visit Fightful.com. So you're not bringing the gi to, uh, where the hell are you going? Oak Island? Oak Island. I'm, a, I'm just afraid of what might happen in TSA, and I love this thing. So does that mean you're going to, like, fry with margarine when you're in Oak Island? No, the guy uh, that we were going with a couple that we know, uh, and he was our strength and conditioning coach for the fight team. I get the feeling that he's got probably his own goddamn gi. Gotcha. But gotcha. We'll be eating healthy while we're there. Okay, that's good. Enjoy. Till next time, guys. <laughs>